name is Lin Jiang. Uh, so I'm a data scientist at the Washington Post. Um, so today I like to talk about how we leverage AI in the newsroom at the Post. Um, so we built lots of data-driven products using machine learning techniques um, uh, to assist uh, the journalist. Um, we do heard a lot, lots of positive feedbacks uh, about how machine learning makes things more efficient and effective, but we do also uh, face lots of challenges. So the biggest concern uh, is that the reliability of the machine learning tools. Um, uh, the fact is that a machine makes mistakes. Uh, well, human does too, but a machine cannot correct itself without human intervention. Um, if we use a robot moderator to review online comments, can it always make the right decisions? Um, obvious, obviously, the answer is no, because there is no perfect model that's Will, that will be always 100% uh, accurate in the real world. Um, but what are the possible consequences if those machine learning tools making mistakes in the, in the productions? Um, actually, it depends on the use case. For example, um, take the uh, robot moderator uh, as an example again. So mistakenly approving a comment is not good because we want to maintain a civil conversation in our comment section. But um, mistakenly deleting a comment uh, is much worse. We don't want to push our commenters away by removing their comments for no good reasons. Um, but some other systems like, uh, for example, a headliner gen gen generation system will have a much higher tolerance for mistakes um, because the human will make the final decision um, before taking any tax actions. Uh, last but not least, um, just like many others in industries uh, that start using AI, journalists may wonder if AI is the threat to their jobs. Uh, so next I will talk about two use cases at the post and, uh, and discuss how we deal with those concerns. Um, at the post, we have about like two million comments per month. Um, so commenters are really crit critical to us because they are engaged and the royal users. But the challenge is that um, some of the comments are really hateful. And uh, if we left the comment section untended, um, the trolls will crowd out thoughtful discussions. Um, but the question is, a manual moderation is very expensive and actually infeasible at such massive scale. So the result is that um, some news organization uh, is shrinking their comment section or even outsourcing to other platforms. Um, but to the post, uh, reader engagement is too critical to uh, curtail or outsource. So we uh, turn to the AI and the modbot is how we automatically um, moderate the user generated content. So Modbot works by giving, by giving um, every comment a score between zero and one. So the closer to one means uh, Modbot is more confident in delete, deleting the comments, and closer to zero means Modbot is more confident in approving the comments. So we can see we have two common uh, example comments here. Comment A is really bad. So Modbot gives a score close to, zero, to close to one, and uh, for another good comment B here, um, it gets a very low score. So the challenge of um, deploying a system like Modbot is we need to develop trust with the users. Uh, in, the in the production, we use threshold to automatic uh, moderate comments with Modbot. So for example, here we use 0 0.8 and 0 0.1 for uh, thresholds, so everything above 0 0.8 will be automatically deleted and everything below 0 0.1 will be automatically approved and, and every comment left between will need human review. Um, so in this case, Modbot is pretty accurate in the prediction, uh, but there is still a big chunk in the, in the middle section that require manual process. So we can adjust the, the threshold by um, uh, changing to 0 0.7 and 0 0.2, but in this case, we might introduce errors. So we give our uh, comments moderation team the uh, ability to control the thresholds of when to trust the modbot versus when to require human uh, moderation. So they can change the, the threshold um, in order to decrease the amount of manual process um, as they gain trust with the system. So as, as I mentioned before, um, mistakenly deleting a comment can be uh, much worse. So they can choose to be more conservative in the deletion and to avoid potential, potential risks. 
So um, we can see that um, the post uh, moderation team used to spend most most of the time um, reviewing comments based on some online discussion policies. So with Mobot taking care of the raw work, they can now have more time to focus on more complicated work, such as um, high, featuring high quality comments or in, interacting with the users. Um, so we can see that Modbot is actually um, more assisting people instead of um, replacing them because um, most machine learning tools are trained based on historical data. So they are actually mimic what human does, what human did in the past and the repeat the patterns. So they can never replicate the creative part of the human jobs. Um, and with Modbot, our readers can have more space to um, express their thoughts in the healthy comment section and our journalists can have more time now to um, engage with the readers. So all these changes can be very beneficial for growing community and improving the reader engagement. Um, another example is the article popularity prediction um, tool. So um, we have over, we actually uh, we have over a thousand pieces of news content every day, but not all of the article will be equally popular. Um, so we need a strategy for editors to prioritize the rising articles so they can enrich the content to um, increase the reading quality. Um, basically, the system consider um, four different types of features for articles, uh, like metadata feature, including article type, section, contextual feature, uh, like sentiment, readability of the text, um, temporal feature, like the, uh, the first view since publication, and the social feature, like um, uh, the, in the 30 minutes uh, tweet vo volume, and so on. So we built a regression model trying to predict uh, the page view of the articles in next 24 hours after publication because um, by its nature, the lifespan of, the, of an article is very short. So it, it is more interesting and valuable to predict an article's early popularity instead, instead of the long-term popularity. So if the system says an article will receive over 100K views um, in 24 hours, we will push it out to a Slack channel. So the newsroom then can like allocate resource to improve the quality or enrich the content by adding images, videos, or uh, contextual links. Um, and actually, a system like this has a much higher tolerance for mistakes because the editors will add their own uh, judgment to the prediction before they uh, decide to whether um, in invest the resource to the articles. So with uh, this popularity prediction tool, um, we can prioritize the rising our articles and optimize the resource allocation. Um, in, this, in this case, our editors can put more effort into um, increasing the uh, content quality so we can serve better reading experience to the broader audience. Um, and also from the business point of view, we can support advertising opportunities. So we can see that um, the AI tools really increase the efficiency of our work. Um, because they can tend to the simple and the repetitive works, uh, so free journalists uh, um, to focus on the high value work. And it also g g gives us the capability of um, deal with some tasks at, at a very massive scale, which can be actually impossible with pure manual efforts. And the journalists can also have better communication between their peers and uh, with the audience, and that's in increased the reader engagement. Um, so one last thing I want to say is um, technology is neutral. The key is how we use it. Um, and with um, appropriate strategic or quality, quality control and humor intervention, we can make the best out of the AI tools. Thank you. Thank you.